all right folks today we got our bass rigs out we over here at my pond that belongs to my father-in-law and uh, we're gonna try to catch a few bass and this pond is overstocked with bass when I first started fishing it about 10 years to 15 years ago we were catching anywhere five to seven pound bass occasionally now you never catch anything over two and a half maybe three pounds at the best and you can catch them all day long uh, now this is fall of the year so it's uh, it's not quite like in the spring I could take this H&H &H, and that's what I'm gonna start with and uh, you could just wear them out as fast as you could put it in there in the fall it's a little different and we may change up and have to catch a fish with a few different baits but we're gonna see if we can uh, see if we can hang us one right out here catch us a few we're gonna take them home fillet them and fry them so y'all stay with us. See if we can get one to hit right out here. We just gonna slow roll it. Kinda come up here next to the bank. And if you'll notice, I, I tend to start out throwing more parallel with the bank than anything. I'm fishing with 15 pound test big game trilene. That's the line that I like to use and it's a it's a kind of a greenish color. I'm gonna bring you a little closer right over here. Maybe you can hear what I'm saying a little better that way. Alright, maybe we'll get one right there. Just slow rolling this H and H. We're gonna try out a little deeper water. See if we can throw out, see if that makes a difference. I like to let it sink just a little bit before I start retrieving. He hit it right at the bank. So this is a pretty small. He hit that H and H, hung him right in the corner of the mile. It's fairly small. He's probably maybe a half a pound, but like I said, we're keeping them because we're trying to get them out of this pond. Uh, we're not trophy bass fishing or whatever. We're trying to manage this pond, so we're gonna keep everything, and they're gonna get filleted and eat. All right, what we've got right here, we've got a cooler. We've dipped a little water with our milk jug. I'm gonna show you right off in there. We've got two in there so far. That'll keep them alive till we get back to the house with them. But uh, y'all stay with us. We're gonna catch another one. There he is. Oh yeah. See if we can make him flatter a little bit for you. All right, we'll flip him right on in there. Another decent one. There. Oh, we missed him. I don't know what happened. He hit it, but he didn't want it. Let's see if he wants it the next time. He didn't get no hook.
Let's cut this one off and we're going to put a we're going to put a deeper diver on here. I don't fish entirely with a lot of crankbaits. I tend to lean more toward plastic baits, but we're just going to try a few right here for the sake of trying them. We're going to go to a natural color. This one here dives pretty good. Better cut our... I'm going to show you how I typically tie. I'm going to pull this camera up here a little bit better where you can see and turn it down toward my hands. What I normally use is what's called a cinch knot. Uh, it's not the only way to tie a hook. It's just the way that I normally tie one when I'm using like uh, anywhere from 10 pound test up to 50, this is 15, possibly 20. When I get above that and I'm catfishing, I usually snail hooks on. But I'm going to show you right quick how I do this. Okay, what I do is I run through there and I make a loop. I just run through the eye and then I twist. I get me about five or six good twists on there. Okay. I'm going to try to keep my hands out of the way. I'm just getting a better grip on it. Okay, we've got it and we've twisted. All right, we're going to go through our loop that we made right down there above the eye. And then we're going to come back through our loop that that made. And then we're going to hold our tag in and that'll cinch down tight. And then we'll cut our tag in off right here. And this is what we're going to be fishing with. Yeah, this ain't working. That's diving too deep. Let's see here. Oh, tried and true. I don't know if y'all are a fan of these Rapala broke back miners. Got a lip on it. I'm fixing to try one out right here. Just that fast. That's in real time. Okay, we've moved on around. We've got a little structure, some tops that we've cut off the pond levee that's laying out in there. And I know these bass tend to hang around these, so we're gonna, we're gonna throw this broke back minnow right out in there.
and work our way up through here. Now you'll notice when I'm bass fishing, I may reel it one time, I may reel it fast, and then I may do some stop and, and uh, stop and goes, what I call it, but uh, I don't do the same thing over and over and over. And then if I find something that seems to be working better, like right there, if they hit it, see you hit it on that stop. If that seems to be what's working, that's what I'll continue to do. You can't, uh, and that ain't a very good fish, but he's coming out of the pond. The only thing I don't like about treble hooks is they hard to get out. Keep you a pair of pliers handy. I try to make it as painless as possible, but I don't want it in my hand either. A little bitty fish going in the cooler. We're going to try that stop and go again. I'm just pulling it, stop. We're going to swap over to some plastic baits. That's what I tend to like. But I didn't show y'all. We fishing with a Abu Garcia reel and we got a Bass Pro Shops graphite series rod. I think this is a seven foot rod. No, it's a six six six. Medium heavy. Fast action. But I tend to lean toward Abu Garcia rods. That's my uh spinning reel. Um This right here, and I seem to have misplaced one of my poles. I bet one of these sticks has grabbed it and pulled it out, but this is a Abu Garcia on a Zebco rod. I just like, uh, and what I do, now when I hook a plastic bait, this is Gamakatsu hooks. I go through it, I go all the way through the back, it's got that little lip on the front. I'll pull this off where you can see. Got that hook. I put my head down on there and I go all the way through the back of this. And then I stick the tip back in there to make it somewhat more weedless. But I don't miss as many fish with this. All right, I thought I had lost a rod back there, but it, uh, I went under some limbs. I had lost it, but it was just right there. This is my other Abu Garcia. This is a Black Max. Now, I don't have any expensive reels or poles. They're like, I think this setup right here with a, this is Ambassador One rod. It's a, uh, six, six, six foot, six inch rod. Uh, this is medium heavy action. But I don't, I don't buy, this is probably 60 bucks for the rod and the reel combo. I don't buy real expensive stuff to fish with. But now I like fishing with these uh, flutes. This is actually a Kevin Van Dam caffeine shad on the same Gamagatsu hook. I do, I hook it similar to the same way, but I don't use any weight on this. Uh, you'll notice on my, uh, on my plastic worms and things, I don't know if I showed you, but I use a bullet weight. I don't know what ounce that is. Uh, but on this, I don't have any weight. And I go through the back again, and I take that tip, and I barely put that tip back in there. They like that. And this color, this is, a, I think, coffee shad or caffeine shad, but it's a, I think that's, 
baby bass maybe the color i'm not real sure i've got some in a pack right here let me look right quick i can tell you what they are Baby bass, caffeine shad. I like these baits. And I like them because they're quality baits. I don't I don't fish with anything hardly that's zoom. I like culprit. These uh this lizard, this lizard right here is a culprit. I like culprit baits. Zoom, zoom seems to just come all to pieces. You can't catch but one fish on a zoom. I don't I don't recommend them. him on in here. Probably the best one of the day. Pound and a half maybe. Hit that culprit lizard. Put him in the bucket. Like old Richard said, let's catch another one. All right, folks, we didn't have no awesome day, but we did catch a few. I'm going to lay them out. Let's see what we've got. Oh. Let me give you a look. See. I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Excuse me. I believe they seven in there. And they decent size. I ain't going to weigh them. I don't, they probably a pound, pound and a half maybe. We don't have no great beer. They might be a two pound one in there, but I doubt it. But what we fix and do is we're going to fillet them. They enough for us to eat. All right. Now, I particularly like this fillet knife. This is a Walmart Black & Decker cheap straight blade. And look, laying right here is a Rapala. I've got, I've got different blades to go in this particular one that sees pointed blades. I do not like all them. I like this old straight blade, cheap. This is the best one. I've burned up so many of them other things. You can buy one of these for $11 or $12 at Walmart. And we like to say Walmarts. <laughs> you got to put that S on the end of it if you're out here in the woods. Oh, my plug ends up here. And it's for a reason because we wash this off and I don't need a receptacle right here. But I've got a power strip right here. It would be ideal if my plug in was over here but it's not so we're not gonna fuss about it i'm thinking though i can plug in this if it's long enough right over here right across the top of some of this other stuff i don't know i need to get me a long extension cord and just leave it in here okay we, we got it like that. That'll, that'll work. I can deal with that. I don't really like my cord coming across in my way. I usually, that's usually the way it is. If you see me play that uh, white perch the other day, that crappie, 
you seen that cord was just about in my way. So anyway, what I do is I start at an angle right here, go down. I figured I'd mess up since it was on film. That's all he is to it. This cord is a nuisance. Pulling against me, I'd about to have to Yeah, I'm gonna have to do something else with it. Let me figure something out. I got my scrap bucket right here, so I'm throwing my guts, my heads, all that in there. Oh. I've got to come up with me a, oh, an extension cord. I got this thing. I'm going to have to plug it up right over here. But I think what I can do is slide this down. And uh, I just don't want it right over here if I'm running water. I don't want, I don't want to get electrocuted. I ain't scared of nothing. But I ain't liking electricity because you can't see it coming. I can deal with something. I can see that electricity. It'll bite you. You won't even know it was there. And that probably ain't enough to kill you. When I was a kid, you couldn't have convinced me of that. We got seven, I'm gonna fillet them. I'm gonna leave y'all in real time and we're gonna fillet every one of them. I fillet bass a lot better than I do crappie. And the reason for that is it's a thicker fish. Oh. And I've said it before, bass ain't as good this time of the year. But now the water temps are starting to drop. It was probably upper 70s maybe lower 80s today maybe i don't know i ain't really looking at the weather but it was overcast before hurricane come through today or came through actually yesterday and uh it went through the western part of mississippi and we're pretty close to the eastern part of mississippi so now this was the biggest one i'm gonna weigh him for you just to for the heck of it man he ain't even a pound we had like a half a pound, something like that. I don't know. I can't, I ain't got it where I can get the camera, but you, you can see his needles nearly straight up. Man, that fear, I had to, I had to pull on him a little bit, make me feel better. But it ain't even quite a pound, the biggest one. And that pond is full of them. I couldn't get them to bite good today. Uh, I don't know if it's because of all the rain yesterday. We've had like two inches of rain. Uh, But that's all right. I got enough. I managed to get enough to eat. I have fish for supper. That's what this is about. Y'all keep them store-bought groceries. I don't like them. Now nah, I'm lying. I like them. <laughs> you can look right here and tell I like them. But I like this kind of stuff. I like to know that I caught. This makes you feel good to know I produced this. We're gonna try to hurry up. I don't wanna make no long videos. I, I realize some of them videos get 30, 40 minutes. You done turned it off. You ain't watched all of it. If y'all still watching right now, I, I appreciate it. I really do. If y'all watching them to the very end, I really appreciate it. I try to be entertaining somewhat. I want it to be educational. Uh, I want to give you fact stuff. I want to help you learn something. You know, maybe I don't think I'm just smarter than everybody else, but maybe I I found a trick out somewhere that you're not familiar with or something. Or but you know, I, I do want to help you, but I want to be entertaining. I want you know you don't mind watching. Me. I don't want to be old boring and cut and dry. And, Hey right, man, that's you turn the TV on, see that kind of junk.
probably gonna do a few. I want to do some fall crappie videos. I, I'd rather fish for the crappie in the fall than I had the spring for one reason. There ain't as many other boaters out there on the water. I don't like to be there when there's so many boats you can't draw back a chunky line without hitting somebody else's boat. Man, they get mad when you do that. You sling a hook off in somebody else's boat and they'll talk ugly to you. I don't talk ugly. I just don't see the need in talking ugly. One more. One more. Y'all gonna learn something about me. I reuse and repurpose everything, which is kind of one of the nicks that I do. I had this milk jug right here with me. I put that in my cooler because I don't like to take my cooler out. You seen that I had it full of water, or not full of water, but it was about half full of water. I don't like to get my cooler out and go over there and you trying to put that cooler down in the edge of the pond and dip pond water up. So I got me a milk jug. I dipped me some water. You see, I cut the top out of it. I dip my water and, and I just throw that back off in my cooler, you know. Well, I got bunches of them and we got a one-year-old. He drinks a lot of milk. So we got plenty of milk. But anyway, that and I got my ice cream bucket. If you ain't got extra ice cream buckets sitting around, you ain't eating enough ice cream. I recommend that everybody eat at least a bucket of ice cream a month. I probably eat more than that. I like ice cream. Alright, I'm uh, trying to decide what knife I'm going to use. I really don't like... I like this knife because somebody give it to me, <laughs> number one. But I don't like that serrated edge. I just don't. But what I am going to do right here, and I don't know if this is sharp enough, but hey, I will show y'all this. This is my dad's. He, this is, he built his skinning shack. This little square block, I hope y'all can see good in the light. It's got green. This is a 400. Oh, I'll turn it this way. Well, it's on both ends. That's 400 grit. You can see it's right there. 300 grit. That's 200 grit, and that's 600 grit. I'm usually a 400 grit kind of guy for just quick sharpening. Now, if it's dull, you might want to go to 200. We'll put a, but I like this little thing. Man, it's got, got rubber pads that sits down in this block. I can leave it sitting there. Look, I ain't even, let me move over where you can see it. I ain't even got to do nothing to reach over there and hit it a lick or two. I can slide it out of my way. And I better wipe the metal shavings off. I don't want to get them in my meat. But I'm going to cut these ribs out. Oh. And yeah, I know you can eat them. I, a lot, most everybody fries them, but that goes in the ice cream bucket. Most everybody uh, fries this with them in there, but when you've got a one-year-old, I try to cut this out over here because I got plenty of fish I ain't, I ain't having to scrap. Uh, I don't want him to get a bone in this. And the next thing, my wife will not eat anything off of a bone. She eats squirrels the other day. The first time I've seen her eat squirrels, really. I knew she liked the meat, but she just don't eat nothing with a bone. She don't eat chicken wings. Man, I love fried chicken wings. I like hot wings. Hey, y'all want to see me do a video on making hot sauce? I got some ghost peppers I'm growing. I thought about, I've, I've done it, but there's a hundred videos on some of that kind of stuff. And I hate to do repetitive videos. You know, there's a how-to on pepper sauce. And I, I did some pepper sauce last night, too. I use apple cider vinegar. And I, I just basically put my peppers in the jar and heated up the apple cider vinegar. I put a little garlic salt, a little bit of Italian dressing in there. You know, just a... 
a little squirt of it really i don't know how much tea i put i used one quart jars all i made but i wanted i used them ghost peppers and then some cayenne pepper because i want it to be hotter than what i already had and it like it goes a long way you don't you don't you a uh, mason jar last you a year i don't eat that much of it or i don't put that much on my food but if y'all want to see if y'all want to see something like that let me know i'll I'll make it. I'll make that video for you. It may not be the way that everybody else does it. I'll just show you how I do it. That's the way I do things. But anyway, I'm using my ice cream bucket for this. I just got to save the stuff. I got made fun of on my my squirrel hunt video. I put just the skinning the squirrels part on Facebook. And I I put it on my page and I put it on a squirrel dog hunting page, fast dogs or whatever it is, and there was one guy. He's like, "You put why are you putting squirrels in your ice cream? It ain't in the ice cream. It's just in the bucket. I ain't, you know, I ain't putting them in the ice cream itself." <laughs> but anyway, you know. I need to raise that up for y'all. If y'all seen how I had my camera set up, you would be laughing. It's sitting on a oyster bucket with a paper towel folded up under the front of it because I got out, unloaded the tripod when I unloaded my fishing poles in my tackle box and got my ice cream bucket. I set the tripod out like a dummy. And lazy me didn't want to drive all the way back over there to get it, so I just... I propped a camera. I, I, I homemade me something to hold my... And I ain't using my phone. I got my camera charged back up. Got it back working. I don't know why I put it. Why'd y'all let me put them ribs in the ice cream bucket? How many of them I done put in there? Did I throw the good meat over him? You have to watch me now. I get to talking and do something foolish. I don't think I did. I think I threw all of it in there, didn't I? Alright, I just want to make sure I'll be throwing my good meat over there. Alright, now we're going to wash this right here. I wash my stuff a couple of times usually because a lot of people think I ain't the cleanest person in the world. Uh, I may be dirty and nasty, but I like what I'm eating and what I'm eating out of to be clean. I just, I don't know. And I'm just rinsing them right here. Alright. We're gonna unplug all of this. Well, I can leave. I'm gonna hook that up, leave that right over there. But uh, I'll just, just kind of show you the way I got this set up, how easy it is to clean up all this mess. Put my knife up and put my I just kind of shove everything back. This is a big old piece of wood that one of my buddies down the road gave me. He said, I want you to cut me some cutting boards out of this. And uh, he never did come back and get it. So when you see this, I'm still using your cutting board. But I like it. You ain't getting it back. <laughs> I, done, I done took a liking to it. And I know you're going to watch this. So drop me a comment when you see your cutting board on here. But I wash that off like that. Easy peasy. I put it back up here. It covers the whole can. You fillet on it, everything. So when you need your cutting board, buddy, you just come up here and use it. <laughs> you can't have it back. <laughs> He's a good guy. He don't care if I have it. I'm... He kills a deer, he gonna bring it up here and hang it up right here on this rack anyway, so. He'll need to cut the board right here worse than he needs it at home. Oh. All right, we got our stuff done. We got our, look, we got our meat. That's, man, that's pretty, we fix to go eat good. Oh, uh, I ain't gonna let y'all come with me to eat. I've done some, we'll do some cooking videos later on. But thank y'all for watching my videos, uh, appreciate it like subscribe drop me some comments uh give me some feedback i know we low on the totem pole but we pushing hard i'm trying to put a bunch of videos out i would like to get to a thousand subscribers before christmas 
Uh, let's make that happen. Tell your friends about this channel, man. Y'all share it around. Share some of the videos on your Facebook pages, something. Yeah, let's, let's push this. Uh, when we get to a thousand subscribers, I'll y'all come up and tell me something. We're gonna do a giveaway of some description. I'm gonna get on here and uh I, we may give some pottery away. Uh, we make a lot of pottery. If you've seen our pottery, get on, check it out. It's on Southern Mud Pottery on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, check our pottery out. But uh, we're doing pretty well. We're really overwhelmed with it. But uh, we may give a pottery away. I may have some Spirit of the Outdoors shirts made or some hats and uh, give something like that away. But y'all help me get to a 1,000 subscribers. We're at like 580-something. So we ain't got no long way to go. Uh, if we can get about four, 500 more people to sign up, man, we got it whooped. Thank y'all for watching, though. Hit like down there.